السلام علیکم دس از غلام عباس فرام ایم ایچ لینگویج سولوشنز ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لرن آئلز اکیڈامک رائٹنگ ٹاسک ون وکیبلری ان آئلز اکیڈامک رائٹنگ ٹاسک ون یو نیڈ ٹو ڈیل ود ڈفرینٹ کائنڈ آف گرافس اینڈ چارٹس دے ریکوائر یو ٹو یوز certain words when you are talking about them this is actually the basic requirement of your exam that you try to exhibit excellent vocabulary skills for details have a look at this picture now you can observe a picture in front of you which deals with IELTS writing assessment criteria. On the left hand, you can observe the criterion and on the right, there is weightage. There are four different areas on the basis of which your writing is measured or assessed. And each one, it consists of 25% weightage. It also means that each of these areas they are worth two and quarter of your band scores the third area here is lexical resource which is actually related to the vocabulary that we are talking about it is also worth the same two and a quarter of band scores which means if you perform better in this area then you have good chances to score better in your IELTS writing. What do we mean by lexical resource? Let's try to understand it. Lexical resource, it consists of almost five different things. The first one is try not to repeat the words from the questions which have been given. In IELTS writing task one and task two, while writing the introduction, we usually take introduction from the question that has been given. So when you are making your introduction, try not to repeat or try not to use the same words that you have seen in the question. Instead of that, try to paraphrase. Then you should have a good range of vocabulary, which means that you should have a lot of words in your head. And if you have more words, then obviously there are more chances to get good bands. If you have less words or if your vocabulary is limited, then obviously your chance is less. The third one is the collocation. Collocation means the knowledge of word combination. You cannot combine any word with the other word. There are certain rules which allow you to mix one word with the other. Let's try to understand it with the help of an example. For example, if I say the expression pretty boy, in this expression, the word pretty and the word boy, both are being combined. And in terms of grammar, that is fine. There is no grammatical error here. But this expression doesn't sound right because the word handsome is the word that is usually combined with the word boy. Pretty is more often used with the girls so that is why this expression it doesn't collocate so when you are writing uh, when you are trying to combine different expressions in your writing you need to be aware of the collocations uh, the fourth area it is uh, you should try to use different synonyms try not to use the same words again and again because sometimes in the question there are core words and you need to use them again and again for example if your question is about students maybe the word student uh, you need to use it again and again so instead of using the word student you can replace it with the word pupil or you can use the word learner so in this way you can avoid the repetition the last one is spelling errors. You should try to avoid the spelling errors if you want to get good band score in terms of your lexical resource. Because if you are making so many spelling mistakes that doesn't sound good, that will not uh, allow you to have a good band score. Dear students, in this video, 
you will learn vocabulary that you can use to write your introduction and you will also learn the vocabulary that will be appropriate to write your main paragraphs let's begin with the vocabulary that can be used to write introduction for this first of all have a look at this slide now the slide that we have in front of us it consists of two things the first one is a question the question says uh, the graphs below give information about computer ownership as a percentage of the population between 2002 and 2010 and by the level of education for the years 2002 and 2010 in this question uh, the second word is the word graph now when we are dealing with task one there are certain kind of graphs for example we may have a line graph or there may be a bar chart or a pie chart or maybe a table so instead of writing the word graph here it is better to use the appropriate word for example if the graph is about a line graph then in your response you can say the given line graph instead of saying the graph you can say the given line graph or the given bar chart or the bar chart moving on we have another word that is highlighted it is give information so we have alternatives that we can use to write this expression as well instead of saying it give information or it gives information uh, we can say it provide information or we can also say that it shows or it illustrates or it represents or it depicts there are many other expressions like that uh, which can be used instead of saying it give information or it gives information uh, let's try to have a look at some more words that are very common in task one question and uh, you can replace them with the synonyms and in this way you can write a good introduction of your task one uh, for example if the word number of is being used or the word ratio is being used or the word share is being used you can replace these words with the synonyms as quantity of instead of ratio you can say proportion instead of share you can say portion similarly many times you need to talk about your spending in task one or uh, you are talking about the information so if you're talking about spending you can replace it with expenditures and if you're talking about information you can replace it with data similarly you may have to write about rate of something or you may need to talk about change instead of rate you can write percentage and instead of change we can use variation similarly we have three more expressions it is very common in task one to have uh, different years and dates so we also have ways to change them as much as we can uh, if for example uh, 1985 to 1995 can be changed with between 1985 and 1995 similarly if you have in 1985 you can say in the year 1985 and if you have in 1985 and in 1995 then we have two possible options you can either write in 1985 and 1995 respectively or you can say in the years 1985 and 1995 so these are some of the words which are very common in your introduction and i have also discussed some of the synonyms that you can use to replace these words with the synonyms so in this way you will be able to produce a good introduction in your task dear students we have had a look at the vocabulary that can be used to write IELTS academic writing task one introduction while writing main paragraphs the graphs can have different trends sometimes the lines or bars they are moving upwards sometimes they are moving 
downward sometimes they stay at their place and other times they make a zigzag position in all these different kind of scenarios we need different kind of words let's try to learn these words that we can use to talk about different trends in these graphs now it's time to discuss different trends that you may observe in your main paragraphs of task 1 first of all there is the upward trend for the upward trend we have different words that can be used uh, on left hand there is vocabulary or there are words that can be used and on the right hand there are sentences the same sentences there actually and uh, different vocabulary item has been used just to show you that how can you use the vocabulary item we have the word rise here the form of the words have already been given all of these words they are verbs even the words which will be coming next all of them they will be verbs so uh, the first one is rise then we have increase then we have go upward then we have climb all these words they mean the same thing they show an upward trend now the next word is peak peak is the word that can be used when you are talking about the highest point in the graph and soar again soar is something that is talking about the upward trend but you will use the word soar only when you are talking about something that is happening very fast for the slow movement you cannot use the word soar moving on towards the downward movement uh, in downward movements we also have certain verbs which you can use and the first one is fall then we have drop then decline then go down then decrease and the last one is dwindle you can replace all these words when you are talking about a downward trend by using these words you will be able to avoid repetition instead of repeating the same word like decrease 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 you can replace the word decrease with any one of these words and in this way you will be able to produce variety in your vocabulary the line is not always moving up or moving down sometime it stays at a certain place it remains same it doesn't change its level so the same kind of example you can see in front of you in the picture we have two words for this situation the first word is level of and the second word is stabilize we use it when there is no change in the line the next one is an exception it means that sometimes the line it makes a zigzag movement it is either moving up and down moving up and down so fastly that it is not predictable to talk about the trend so in that situation we say the line is fluctuating or there is fluctuation in the line so the word fluctuate is the word appropriate for this kind of scenario we have uh, mild fluctuation if the movement in the line is not very hard or it is not very fast then we say it is mild fluctuation but if the line is moving very fastly then we say it's a wild fluctuation or the line is fluctuating widely however there is one problem with the vocabulary that we have discussed and you can see the problem in front of you if we talk about the upward movement the upward movement it can be either fast or it can be slow the slow movement is on the picture above and uh, the fast movement is in the picture below similarly if we are talking about the downward trends we may have a fast or slow movement but unfortunately most of the words that we have learned so far we do not know if we need to use these word for a fast movement or for slow movement so the good thing is we have a solution of this problem and what is the solution the solution is the words which have already been learnt those words were actually verbs and with those verbs we can add adverbs 
and these adverbs they will help to show if the movement is fast or if the movement is slow the adverbs which are on your left they show fast movement if you want to show a fast upward or downward movement then you can use these words or these adverbs and if you want to talk about the slight movement then we have the words on the right hand so on the left hand we have sharply dramatically suddenly rapidly considerably significantly we can also use them with the verbs that we have already learned for example you can say rose sharply or you can say fell dramatically similarly coming to the right hand we have slightly slowly gradually and steadily and you can also use them for example you can say decreased slightly or increased slowly or gained slightly the vocabulary that we have learned so far it was fine when we were dealing with line graphs or bar charts or data charts but when it comes to deal with the pie charts we need a different set of vocabulary because pie charts are always about percentages and when you are writing the values given in the pie chart in percentages obviously you cannot say this percentage or this percentage or this percentage again and again so we need some other words that we can use instead of using the word percentage and uh, for this you need to have a look at this slide that is in front of you in this slide we can see that there are four different parts we have pie charts then we have percentages then we have proportions and the last one is fraction so if we have 66% and we want to say it in another way we can say it's a large proportion or we can also say it is almost 2/3 if we dissect a pie chart into three parts each part will consist of 33% so in this way 66% will be actually 2/3 uh, similarly if you want to talk about 73% you can say a significant majority you can also say nearly 3 quarters a quarter is actually the fourth part of something and if we dissect the pie chart into four parts then it will have four parts consisting of 25% each and uh, since 73% it very close to 75% so that is why we can say that it is nearly 3 quarters similarly uh, the next one it shows 25% and uh, in terms of proportion or in terms of number we can say it's a small number and we can also call it a quarter the next pie chart uh, that we can see in the slide in front of us it has 5% 5% can be written as an insignificant amount or you can also say it is a tiny fraction 40% since it is very close to the half so we can say it is almost a half the last one is 33% we have already talked about it that if one part is 33% in the pie then obviously three parts they will consist of 99% so in this way we can say it is one third and uh, in the next slide we have another one this pie chart is about uh, 15 percentage and when you want to talk about it you can say it's a small minority so guys in these slides uh, you have learned about uh, pie charts and you can also have got an opportunity to look at talking about replacement of percentages if you don't want to talk about percentage what are the other words or what are the other expressions that you can use about percentages dear students in the end i would say that this was the vocabulary that you can use to write your ielts academic writing task 1 we have discussed the vocabulary that you can use to write the introduction and we have also talked about the vocabulary that can be used to write main paragraphs i hope this video was very helpful for you thank you very much for watching this video stay tuned 
for the next exciting video. Allah Hafiz.